I've been with NTS for uh, 14 years now. Started off on the service truck. Basically, we'll talk about combine wheel types, uh, the wheel inspection points, what to look out for, tire technologies that are available, and uh, product updates. So combine wheel types, um, we have a few of them here. Um, the OE style dolly duels, like the drink holder we have over there, is um, what you see most of, because it's the original equipment on John Deere and Case. And then we got straddle duels, which is the, in the Michelin booth with the white wheels and the Michelin tires on them. That's what we call a straddle duel. Expanded band we do not have on display. It's made by Unver Firth. And then uh, large super singles, which are becoming more popular. Um, so the OE uh, straddle duels, <clears throat> they have a two inch spacer in between them. And uh, what's available is if you're having mud issues in between, um, not enough clearance, you can, you can buy a, a wider spacer, a five inch or an eight inch or 10 inch. Um, it does give you, like I say, more clearance, but it does actually create a little bit more stress on the wheel as well, on the dual wheel as well. The most cracking issues we would see with the OE style duels, um, and um, we'll get some pictures later. Seems like every year we do at least a dozen service calls out to the farm, replacing broken and wheels that have broken right, right in the field. Case have been the most issues because of, this is a case IH with the extra um, holes in them, and what that does is removes more steel, which causes it to start cracking around the bolt pattern and then spider out. John Deere had the 10 hole up until 2019, and now they actually went to a 20 hole as well. So um, they do have a little bit more reinforcement on the outside of the John Deere ones, the 2019 and newer. So we're hoping that will make it a little stronger. The uh, straddle style duels are only available aftermarket and they're a lot stronger. The reason they're stronger is because you got your original bolt pattern that bolts to the combine and then you got a, an extra set of bolts on the outside and uh, they go like 18 and 20 bolts, some are 16, so that it has that extra set of bolts for added strength. And then this is the expanded band when I was mentioning by Unver Firth. And I would say these are the strongest of all. The only drawback is, is this. Um, it doesn't leave you much mud clearance on the bottom. You know, the other ones were up here, so there's a little more mud clearance up there. But you can get a lot more strength and a lot more life out of them. And the reason they're stronger is because the bolt pattern's way out here. So um, instead of being leverage on the small bolt pattern, it's way out and it has these added gussets as well. And historically, we have not seen any of those cracked at all. Also, with the big singles, LSWs, we have not seen any of those cracking as well. So that. I think is a really good option for a large combine with a hopper extender and all that. The reason they don't crack is because their center load bearing, the plate is right in the middle of the tire, so you, there's no leverage creating extra um, stress on the center dish, so it's center load bearing. So as far as inspection before harvest, things to look for is uh, on the rear, this is a rear wheel, we've seen them crack starting by the bolt going out. And this is actually a straddle duel in the butt weld. Uh, they start to hairline crack there. And the, one to, the first one that goes is the auger side inside, just about every time, because that auger hangs out there. So that's the first one to look for. And so this is a picture of one we did last year. After we took the dual wheel off, which was bolted here, this literally just fell against the combine, just cracked out. So I'll turn it over to Pat on tire technologies that are out there. All right, so the main thing I'm gonna talk about is the technologies that are out there, both uh, ties into grain carts, combines, tractors, pretty much everything uh, for the farm, but we're gonna concentrate on the bigger applications like a grain cart and a combine right now. So you got bias tires, uh, everybody's kind of familiar with those. They've been around, you know, since the beginning of uh, rubber tire technology. Not a lot of flex, uh, pretty stiff tire, really rigid. They don't ride that great going down the road, pretty low carrying capacity. So we don't see a lot of those anymore in the uh, bigger applications like combines, uh, grain carts. They've switched to uh, standard radials, which have been around you know, 20, 30 years uh, going back. Uh, increased flexion from a bias tire, but not quite on the level of an IF and VF tire. So a lot of people might not be that familiar with what that technology is. So we're gonna talk more about that and uh, get you up to speed. Um, so I don't know how well you can see it, but it starts here with the, with the tire pressure. Um, what you can do uh, going from a bias tire to a radial to an IF and a VF, load carrying capacity, footprint size, 
traction, ride quality, tread life, and overall durability. So as you move down the line from a bias to a radial tire, you're gonna notice that your traction is gonna go up simply because uh, the tire is gonna flex a lot more, which is gonna put more rubber on the ground, which is gonna increase the, uh, the ride quality, the tread life, the durability all the way down the line. So when you move down to an IF tire, this is where some people um, are still learning and there's a lot of new technology out there with every brand. An IF, basically what that stands for is increased flexion. So uh, when you take it versus a standard radial, uh, you can look at it one of two ways. 20% more load carrying capacity at the same air pressure as a standard radial. Uh, and then a VF is gonna be 40%. So that stands for very increased flexion. So if you're running you know, a standard 25 PSI, you can put the same PSI in an IF tire and carry 20% more load or reduce the air uh, PSI by 20% and not damage the tire and then 40% with a VF. So um, you'll kind of notice as you decrease the PSI, obviously the footprint size is gonna get bigger. It's gonna increase your traction and decrease the, uh, the compaction across the field. Yeah, so, yeah, so this is uh, from Ag Revival over in Given. So we, uh, this was on a planter tractor. So on 35 PSI on the backside of a front wheel assist, just like this one, uh, you'll notice how how small of a footprint it had with the tread bars. And then when you dropped it down to 12 PSI, and we actually did it all the way down to six PSI, you can see how much footprint you get just by dropping the air pressure, and that's gonna help with the compaction. Uh, so this is just kind of a basic illustration from footprint size. So a basic 30.532, you see a lot of them on grain carts, some of the smaller combines that are out there, uh, 400 square inches at the, uh, at the proper inflation. So now when you take that same size tire and just switch it to a radial, 865.32, you had 175 square inches of tire on the ground. You bump that up to an IF, you're all the way up to 655, and then a VF in that same size tire, you can go all the way up to uh, 700 inches. So you're almost doubling your footprint size with the same size tire just by flattening out that, that, the footprint. Now, some of the... Uh, some of you might kind of be wondering what, uh, what kind of, what brand of tires do we like? What are some of the good options that are out there? Um, basically the thing to keep in mind with a tire on a grain cart or a combine, there's uh, pretty much every brand out there, every representative here is gonna have a, have a good option. The thing to keep in mind is uh, IF technology, VF technology, and uh, load carrying capacity. So it doesn't matter what brand of tire it is, if the, uh, if the load carrying capacity isn't there, it's not gonna hold up. You could have a, you know, you could have an expensive tire and if it's not rated to carry it. So some of them that we like, you uh, can talk to the Trello board guys back there in the 800 size, the 865.32. Uh, they make a TM2000 IF CFO. It's been a really nice tire. Alliance Power Drive makes one in that size. It's got a 181 load rating. Uh, and then the Michelin Cerex bib. It's an IF CFO. Uh, jumping up to the 900, one of the ones that we really like is the 376 Multistar from Alliance. It's steel belted. Got a 191 load rating, uh, got good carrying capacity, and it holds up really good against stubble. So the Alliance guys would be happy to fill you in on that. Uh, Firestone also makes an IF CFO, uh, radio all traction. Michelin makes a, a Mega X bib and a Sarah X bib, and then a Goodyear DT830. Now when you bump up into the larger ones, like the thousands and the 1050s and the 1250s, uh, both on the grain carts and the combines, Again, Alliance makes a nice option in the Multi-Star and the Agriflex. Trelleborg makes a nice one. Uh, the TM3000 in a VF option, and then a Metas SFT. And then also in that uh, 1250 size, you see some of those on the bigger 11 and 1200 bushel carts. The Metas makes a nice one as well. So all these guys would be happy to fill you in more on that. But those are some of the ones we like. Um, this is a little update uh, on the Goodyear LSWs. So all of them moving forward now, they made a few improvements. They're gonna be steel belted. So I just mentioned uh, some of those Alliance tires with the steel belting. What that does, it, uh, it's gonna improve the puncture resistance, so stubble damage. Uh, and it's gonna put more actual tread on the ground because it's gonna be just a, a stronger profile. So those are just some of the improvements that they've made to the, to the LSW 1250s and 1400s, the popular combine sizes. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, any of these guys, uh, any of the reps, they'll have, uh, they'll have some more information for that IF and VF technology. They'd be happy to answer any questions you guys might have.